se cin lo punta ya se cin lo punta ya se cin lo punta We are seeking, Lord, Kumbaya. We are seeking, Lord, Kumbaya. We are seeking, Lord, Kumbaya. Oh, Lord, Kumbaya. We are weak today. Give us strength. Give us courage, Lord, as we continue reflecting on our lives and on our human experience. That we may never rush to act on things and to react to things and to react to our experiences. But we may learn to treasure and ponder things in our hearts. Grant us the wisdom, Lord, to reflect, to judge wisely, to think deep, to sink into the depth of our heart and seek your Holy Spirit for understanding and wisdom. And that at the end of the day, we may interpret every experience in the light of your knowledge and wisdom, and that we should always seek to do our best and leave the rest to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So when you go home and people are throwing spades of dirt, spades of sand, spades of uh, to make you die because you are useless to them or you are a nuisance, just shake off, shake off, and move ahead. Are we together? Yes. So the secret that uh, we have is secret number seven. Secret number seven, learn to treasure. Treasuring means to keep, to keep with a lot of value. Learn to keep with a lot of value whatever you experience. Learn to treasure what you hear, what you feel, what you touch, what you see in your heart. It won't explode your heart. Are we together? Learn, so the, the, the exact way of putting the thing, learn to treasure what you experience in your heart. That's the seventh, seventh secret to happiness. If you don't want the trouble, what you hear, what you see, what you experience, what you feel, before you share it with anybody, anybody, dear, trusted, and whoever, even the closest of friends, treasure it in your heart. Process it in your heart. Analyze it deep inside your heart. Weigh it. If you are so quick and rash about, you know, you are so rash, you know, you, you quickly you wanted to share, you might end up sharing what is precious to the ears of a witch. And what happens, if it is a good thing about your life, they take it away. If it is about your gifts, they turn it into a, a, a curse. If it is about your success, what will they say? They will spoil it. If it is about your failure, you know what will happen? They will use it against you. Because the enemy can befriend you so beautifully 
and you think we are together with them, they are, you know, they can come and even dry your tears up as if they are there and even themselves they can shed tears and yet the tears are only crocodile tears. When people wanted to come and spy on you, to come and get information that is precious in order to, to, to deal with you, in order to destroy you, they befriend you. There's wisdom in Isaiah 6, 1 to 5, when they say, the book of Ecclesiasticus, or the book known as Impunzits, when they say, when you get a new friend, put him or her to the test. Don't just download everything. Download. Many people have been disappointed because they just download. Download as if they don't have good diskets in their heads to keep these things. Learn to treasure what you hear, what you feel, what you see. And only after weighing the implications. Is this worth you know, sharing? Is this worth you know, repeating? What will happen? You know? What will happen if I share? What will happen if I don't share? Are we together? In other words, I'm saying, reflect. Give yourself time. Sometimes when we are rushing, you know, repeating stories, people will say, ah-ah. Mwamvaguti. Ha-ha-gu Without facts. Where did you hear this? Oh, I, I, I heard it. And you know, the, I, I, you know, did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Like you manufacturers of chewing gum. Did you know? There are some, those papers, papers of chewing gum. There are answers. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Did you hear? Did you hear? If you wanted to be at peace, when you hear dangerous things, you see sensitive things, you feel sensitive stories, never repeat them. Whatever comes from here, it will come on its feet and find you and confront you. And uh, we are reflecting on the strength of Mary. Luke 2, verse 15 to 20. And I'm going to read that one. Luke 2, verse 15 to 20. The shepherds and the angels. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven, the shepherd said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known. Okay, so they saw Mary there. So when they saw this, they made known what had been told to them by the, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed and what the, at, at what the shepherds were saying. And, but Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Are we together? Yes. You hear a lot of praise, a lot of goodness. I have learned myself, Bambodimba, even when something is so beautiful about myself, there is a success to come about myself. I don't share. You do not know. People who seem interested as if they are, you know, sympathizers and good wishers. Not all of them. The heart of your friend, of your neighbor, is another bank of the river. Some people, because they don't want you to be embarrassed, they do not want to show you that they are jealous of you. They will be grinning as if they are smiling. <laughs> well done, well done, congratulations. Deep inside it is pricking them. So once they go, they start dealing with you strategically. And what does the devil, uh, the agent of the devil does? They make so many things. People can use accusation, can twist the truth, can persecute us, can distort our truth. And you know, at the end of the day, oh, they have spoiled things. So Christian maturity is to know to, to have the strength, no matter how excited you are, 
And do you know sometimes for myself, when, you know, when I have seen the wonders of the Lord, maybe I was afraid that something, you know, how will this situation be? Or oh, it's a difficult task. And you know, sometimes before I share my joys, I just praise God. I put on a CD in the car. I close the, the, the windows. You understand? And I'll be going, <laughs> Have you killed a person? You know, some news burn your heart. Bad and good news can burn your heart. You want it to share to your closest. But because of the existence of people, ill wishes and well wishes, because of the existence of the fact that you do not know your friend's heart, do not put them into temptation by quickly telling them of the greatest successes. They might ruin you. You are provoking the ruin. You are provoking the destruction. Let people see the success when it comes, when they, you can't avoid it, to hide it. Does this sound reasonable? Yes. So she treasured all these things, all these words, and pondered them, pondered them, processed them, processing. Hey, I, a virgin. Hey, the Lord is wonderful. Praise God. The thing is that when you are excited, people can take it from their hands. Herod would say, hey, you are excited. Uh -huh. Take and kill the baby. You understand? Don't expose even good things, but also even bad things. But sometimes we say, you, you are going to be killed. Have you heard they say they are coming to kill me? You know, is it true now? You know, what, where did I go wrong? And people are nowhere, but they say, yeah, it fits her best. Let them deal with her. She was proud. Are we together? Yeah. That's what people do. I have learned it through experience. What I'm talking about is that I also was excited about some things. Just like you are. I have learned bitter lessons. Ponder things in your heart. Be wise. Know when, know to whom, know what, know how, know why you share things. In this, prog you know, in this modern era, your security is not security at all. What used to be security in those olden days is not security anymore. Because of SMSs. For example, I have insulted you, you have seen my negatives. And I think, okay, you stay here, you know, I don't care about you, I'm going to Lilongwe. As I am going, whether I am flying away or by bus or by any by bicycle going to Lilongwe, SMSs will be passing, they will reach before I reach. They have already spoiled my name there. You understand? <coughs> have you realized that? The world is so insecure. I, I, I don't want you to, to but become aware of what the situation is. In terms of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus, it was good news for those who thought they were, it was good news. But for many who were cashing in on the poverty of others, on the lameness of others, on the deafness of others, on the blindness of others, on the sicknesses of others. Those false prophets who came pretending to be healers, those bad, you know, bad leaders, bad shepherds, you know, those false prophets, the scribes and the Pharisees. When Jesus came as a Messiah to liberate the poor and the oppressed, it wasn't good news for them because Jesus was a threat. He had taken their business where they were praying and nobody was being healed because of their corrupt ways, he was successful. That's why they had killed him. That's why they twisted things. I do not say that you always be careful. Ah, there's a limit. But do not expose what you hear and see and feel and touch far too quickly. And we'll go to some places. You can say that these people... 
they must be knowing my story. Sometimes I have gone to places as Father Dimba. I think this is, who knows me in Zambia West? Hey, you just hear, I am Father Dimba. You see, by the way, they are looking at each other. Oh, you are Father Dimba. You know they have a story about me. SMSs have come before me. <laughs> have you had that experience? That you know people have invisible lists. You know, to start, you have, she has come, he has come. Oh, is it true what I heard in the SMS? Yes. They are busy ticking. They don't take you as you are, as you reveal yourself. They are ticking what they have already heard about you. Bad things. So sometimes, openness must be prudent. Are we together? Yes. Don't be carelessly open. You might risk. And then you say, Kalanga ine. So what I'm saying is that lack of reflection, lack of pondering, thinking deep, reasoning inside, asking yourself questions. Act, you know, seeing, judging, and acting. You know, don't act without judgment. Don't act without having experienced enough. Sometimes where, where you are going, you know, you, you are going on, the, you know, you are on a bicycle. You, it's an, you know, a steep kind of a terrain. You see as if there's water. You come there, there's no water. Our senses sometimes deceive us. But then you are quick. I'm going to get a lot of money. And then the money doesn't come because circumstances haven't allowed. When is the money coming? Are we together? Oh, I'm going to get. You know, he's cool. Like baby cool. He has broad shoulders. And you know, hey, hey, you just hear that, that person has been married. Uh, so where? And they come, you know, mocking. You know, you said your husband. Where is the husband? <coughs> If you want people to see, let them see the works, the fruits, other than the ideas and the intentions you want to, you know. It's only for those that you have tested as good friends, and they have proven to be good friends, that you have to share. But share them in your, you know, ponder them in your heart. A lot often we bring severe unhappiness upon ourselves because of the inability to ponder what we hear, what we feel, and what we, we see in our hearts. Often we are too quick to speak out and to let the cat out of the bag to our own detriment, to our own destruction. The process of pondering things in one's heart after an experience has a great role in formation, informing us. Patience, tolerance, no matter how burning it is, the moment you are you know, grilled in joy, Enjoy the joy. It heals where you had sadness. Are we together? If the joy is kept inside, you are not letting it out. It has the power to heal, you know, the, 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 the negative experience you had. But instead of experiencing the joy, like, like a, a broken mouth, just like that. Ah, can't you shut up your mouth? You know, that kind of a thing. And you think when these people smile at you, they are smiling. You think they are smiling, and yet they are grinning. You think they are listening, yet they are thinking of how to deal with you. People can be good, but they can also be bad. People can bless, but don't forget that they can also destroy you. Every person needs adequate time for pondering over things. And the quicker you are in sharing, downloading, and opening, and opening, you know, downloading, eh, eh, you know, the more problems you bring, jealousies. It is unfortunate that many people tend to seek quick and instant solutions and interpretations of their experience without going through proper processes. Do you know people have different perspectives? How many people are we? About 65. Is it? Bansley here. Here I am. Where is Father Dimba? Can you point where Father Dimba is, Bansley? He's towards the south. Ankata, where is Father Dimba? He is towards the west. Where is Father Dimba Tapiwa? He is to the north. 
people do see the same reality from different perspectives. He saw where, from where he is sitting. He has seen it from where he is sitting. Tapiwa has seen it where, uh, you know, from where she is you know, sitting. Do not think that your experience will be seen in the same way as other people see it. And sometimes people just drop in their opinions and ideas, but they do not have a clue of what you are experiencing, the pain. For example, you share about the difficulties in marriage with your husband or your wife. They are not in the situation. They can offer you cut and dry solutions. But you have so much, just divorce him. But you are thinking of the good things the husband did. But at the meantime, you have shared with this particular you know, woman or, or man friend only the negatives. So at the end of the day, begin the reflection yourself. After being full of reflecting, involve trusted friends. Are we together? But at the end, no matter what you have heard from friends, blend what you have heard and what you value, and then make your decision. The beginning is yours. The middle, you may or may not involve others. But then the end, it is finally yourself because you take the consequences of your decisions. In some circumstances require that we share, but maybe not yet. Not too Ere. Ma wo pulumutsa ada pulumutsa wo wo sees ada pulumutsa jani kalulu kalulu was you know you know always talking too much talking too much but he was so clever one day that uh, you know he said hey look at you the way you look your eyes are like... I said yeah, your eyes they are sparkling hey you know that's what I was saying so. Not, you know, when he was asking, no, no, I just was praising you. Mm. Uh, he didn't share. Have you ever experienced that you wanted to share? Something tells you you shouldn't. You twist the, the story a bit. Uh -huh. You know, it's cleverness. Cleverness. <laughs> cleverness. Eh? Like a constipation of ideas. Diarrhea of words. <laughs> Remember that an unreflected life is not worthy living. Who said that? Socrates, huh? a philosopher from Greece. A person that, you know, a life that you don't reflect on, you better die than just reacting and doing as things come. You jump or you jump. You are just like a robot. You should be able to say, jump. Why should I jump? Can you give me a few reasons? Sorry, not, but uh, I just wanted a few reasons. No, according to the reason, they don't hold water. I am mourning now. I will not jump. But some other people are like robots. Jump, they jump. Laugh, they laugh. I mean, that's a stupidity, you know. Adorated stupidity. So reflect, reflect, and ponder. You will not die by containing the joys in your heart. We should not be rash about the process of reflection. And sometimes, you know, hear things, you know, people hear things while they are running. And as I said, they are quick to share. And it's a half truth or quarter truth. You repeat it, you lose your integrity when people discover the truth. Why be part of that trouble? And when you do that two, three times, they label you, you are either a gossiper or a liar. So they don't take anything that you say seriously. Tame your tongue. About taming the tongue. The tongue can set fires that you never would think they would be there. And then when you read the book of Proverbs, are we together? Book of Proverbs. You know, you realize that uh, people learn to understand who you are by what you say. They know you are deep. They know you have reflected on life. But if you just go, quack, 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 
an empty tin makes a lot of noise. So what we say shows our real attitude towards our, ourselves, you know, towards others. How we talk reveals what we are really like. Our speech is a test of how wise or foolish we are. To be wise in our speech, we need to use self-control. Are we together? Self-control. Our words should be honest and well chosen. Nobody, if people are saying, you have a right, my dear sisters. When people ask a question, in a difficult question, you know, case, you say, I don't want to comment. No comment. Maybe later. Nobody should force you to say what you don't want to. We have the freedom of expression and the, the right to, be, to keep quiet. The rusher you are, the quicker you are about saying things, the more foolish people discover you are. So Mary, we can learn from Mary that she kept things she had heard, beautiful things that time. And reflection, because it's a process, is healing. Time heals. Are we together? When you are reflecting, I'll give you an answer next week. Then you gather your facts right. When you, are, you quickly want to give an answer, you at the end of the day, like it has happened to me, oh, I should have said this. I shouldn't have said this. Oh, I, should, I forgot this point. Prepare your defense well. You are not in a hurry because you can set fires around yourself. As I said, the pain of having to bear things in your heart, especially sad news and bad news, is that it purifies us. That pain will not go unrewarded. Are we together? But the joy that, you know, it brings the joy, if it is contained within yourself, the joy, it heals you. It heals the past memories that were dark and painful. It gives you healing. But you want it to quickly pew, 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 into the air. It goes. And provoking unhappiness on yourself. There are many people whose actions clearly reveal that they do not use their heads adequately. They underuse heads. Have you had friends who talk without thinking of the consequences? And sometimes you just wish, you know, I have seen couples, married people, huh? one said, Father, my cross really, you said each one should carry crosses. <laughs> the, my husband is my cross. He does not reflect when he talks. I don't know, sometimes I should, I, I wish I should close the mouth. Please don't say this. If we are in public, please, please, you haven't just... <laughs> Have you seen those people? You, should, you wonder, as, as if, should I prick them? But the problem is that when you are sitting, sometimes he's sitting very far. You can't walk. You say, no, please don't. And the, you know, you may start blinking. <laughs> but they don't hear, you know. And sometimes the summer says, no, delay can delay. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I wanted to talk. Freedom of expression. <laughs> These wives are suffering, eh? And these husbands are suffering. Oh. <laughs> you know? So those who act without reflection bake on a multitude of troubles upon themselves. Happiness is not achievable for the unwise. Happiness is not achievable for the unwise. Those who fear reflection, thinking. Those who fear wisdom. Those who do not hold and they have, don't exercise self-control about their time. I think uh, that point, you understand now what I meant by saying it's a secret. Then last uh, on the list about uh, uh, today's secrets. Secret number eight. Secret number eight. Always do your part and leave the rest to God. Always do your part. And do your best. You understand, you understand, my dear brothers and sisters. Do what is 
for you. What is supposed to be done by you. And leave the rest to God. And leave be people's business for them. You know, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. Two Thessalonians, three, verses 11 to 12. Paul says, what is this that we are hearing? That some other people are lazy. Two Thessalonians, three, verse 11 to 12. What is this, you know, quarrels and qualms? You know, what is this we are hearing? We hear that some of you are leading idle lives, lazy. And that, uh, you know, you are so lazy, instead of doing what you know best, what you, you, know, you are supposed to do, you are interfering with everybody. You know, other works. Are we together? There are so many people, many people that interfere with everybody else's. They want to correct before they correct their own thing. They see the plan, you know, they, they see, uh, they, they, uh, you know, they speak in other people's eyes when they have planks. And I was wondering at that parable, that example, if a person has planks, are you able to, to see? So it is in their attitude, there is a problem in their attitude that they see even when they have no eyes. There is a deep truth there. Jesus saying, huh? how can you judge? Do not judge. How can you remove a small piece of wood from somebody's eyes and then, you know, and yet you have a plank? So if you had a plank, tabla. I don't know. This is a plank. So if you put a plank in front, can you see? So the problem is their attitude. They see mistakes everywhere. They see occasions for correction everywhere, even where there's no need for correction. Have you met those people? Yeah. People that are not easily satisfied and pleased. So, Luke 2, verse 21. Luke 2, that's a, a secret number 8, has that. Luke 2, verse 21. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. After eight days, Mary took the baby Jesus to be circumcised. That is an example of a woman of faith who did what was supposed to be done by her and left the, the, the rest to Even ordinary things. Success is not doing big things. You start by small, small things. If you don't start keeping one tambala and one kwacha, you never keep millions. Because millions is the total sum of many tambalas and many kwachas. No matter how small the issue is, do it and do it well. Negligence of small matters leads to a great disaster and embarrassment. Do what is required of you. A lot often we have been blaming God for the failure in being happy in our lives. You know why? We neglected small matters. Small matters about our faith. Small matters about trusting in God. Small matters about doing the right thing, feeding the poor and, you know, loving our neighbor and forgiving our, you know, our brothers and sisters. And yet we pray every day, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And yet we have grudges for a long time and we want God to bless us. You are kicking your brother here and say, God, bless me. And oh, God, bless me, God. Boom. Boom. God, bless me. Boom. You know, ah. He blesses those who bless others. He forgives those who forgive others. Do your best. Leave the rest to God. Many people sell their happiness so cheaply by leading lives without a purpose. Rick Warren. Rick Warren. 
has a book, A Purposeful Life. The greatest tragedy in life is a life without purpose. You don't have the aim. You have to have a project in your life with ob objectives. And what do we call it? If you have... You know, a purpose is like what? A ground where you stand. So a person who has no ground is a hobo, hobo, hobo. You don't stand. Carried by any wind, you are not planted. A purpose is, you are planted there. And that's why you go wherever, you know, you go to every party, you can't say no. Have you seen people who never say no to parties? Wherever they go, you know, wherever there's a party, everywhere, even before an invitation. Ah, 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 ah. A person who has a purpose in life knows when to say no and when to say yes. You stand your ground. A purpose in life is where you stand, where you are planted. Are we together? Yes. Although we are called to, to, to be available to people, but you should also be available to yourself. A, a louse that is two movies has made two finger, uh, fingers. Sabayo yenda yende makumana nchia? Ehe. Tue. What else can we say about a purposeless life? That you know, in order to do your best, you need to? To know your purpose. And the greatest shame and the greatest failure in life is to succeed in a wrong assignment. Suppose a teacher had said, answer questions one and two out of the six in section A, and don't answer any in section B. And you answer section B so well, will you pass the exam? No. The greatest failure in life is to succeed in a wrong assignment. Some people specialize in wrong assignments. So success in a, in a field which is not yours is failure. Because what is properly yours, you have failed there dismally. What is your Christian purpose? To love and love, to forgive and to forgive, and to remind people of a provident God no matter how long that providence may take to come back. Having nothing specific to one's life makes or reduces you into a playground of every eventuality and circumstance. Somebody said, if you don't stand for something, you stand for everything. Are, we, are you with me? If you don't stand for something specific, then blown by every wind. You are taken as a playground of people's opinions and of people's interests. They use you and abuse you. Because our life is short. If you scatter all your energies into different situations, oh my God, precision and excellence comes only by focusing. So don't take anything for granted. In my case, it is a very tedious and challenging job to want to talk to people. Some are scientists, you know, scientists, some are geographers, and some are biologists. They can say, but Father, what, what, what kind of philosophy, what kind of biology is that? We never heard. I am a biologist myself. If you don't, you know, uh, some people invite unhappiness in their lives because they live for anything and for everything. And life can't be for anything and for everything. You have to learn to sacrifice, to say no and to say yes. There are so many beautiful things. And no matter how beautiful, even for jobs, you have to consider how does it affect my family? How does it affect my children? How does it affect me? Do they have great benefits after my retirement? You consider all those things. Not being taken, you know, 
This is beautiful, this beautiful has killed what? Or has made a, a cat fall at its back. <laughs> Some people do not know what to do in life and what with life. They are just sitting there. But the greatest gift we have is time also. But the time must be used well. And happy people know how to use their time well. Many people do not know how to, to do with their life. Some people even correct God. They advise him and they drive him around. Have you met them? Have you met people who are driving God and advising God? You shouldn't have said this. <laughs> no, you have passed here No. Many people leave what they are supposed to do and go interfering with other, uh, other things and discover your talents. You can only do your best when you have best utilized your gifts. And do you know where people do progress and do get their fulfillment? It is when they use that secret talent in themselves to the full. That's where you... There's nothing that is unpolished in yourself. Are we together? I sat with the novices in the spiritual year in South Africa. And uh, I realized that, you know, you know the, the, their director told me, Oh, uh, it seems they are not using their gifts. All of them seem to be playing cards in the evening. I said, no, do tell them to go and, you know, each one into his talent. talent. Is it computer? Let them spend the time on the computer. Is it guitar? But sometimes we expect people to be marching like a, a squadron. Left, right. Left, right. We are not made to be left, right. Uh, the army is necessary, but not left, right. Left, right. Left, right. We, some you know, can hit the, uh, the right. Others are hitting the left. It's okay as long as it is their gift. Some use their head. Others use their heart. Some use their hands. Others have to use their legs. This house where we are sitting under. There was a carpenter because we see the ceiling. There was a bricklayer because we see bricks laid in order. There, were there was an ex a textile industry and all this. And there were technicians and, uh, you, know, you know, technologists. And they have made, you know, scientists and uh, physicians. Many, it's, it's one spirit so many gifts in order to build the body of Christ. Use your gifts to the maximum. You know, one spirit, but many gifts. One God, many gifts. For my own good, for upliftment of others, and for building the body of Christ. And Paul says, if everybody was the ear, the whole body was the ear, who would speak? If everybody was a farmer, who would buy the, the products, for example? If all were electricians, where would, you, would they be storing their goods? You know, so we have to be builders, farmers, teachers, and all that. And thrive where you are and leave the rest to God. You beg on trouble, you lose your happiness when you try to do what is meant for God. And when you have done whatever you were supposed to do, and you go and do what others are supposed to do, you are looking for trouble. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.